was the missionary song by the Lord's Messengers from New Life Fellowship of Lee.
Welcome to New Life. I'm Pastor Steve Upshur here with a few special guests tonight, and we're here to let you know that you are loved by God and that God has a special plan for your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this, Therefore, if any man, and that includes you, or woman, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now that word new creature means literally this. He is a new creation, a new species of being that never before existed. And I am here to tell you that for the last 20 years, I have been a different individual than I was in my former life because of the power of Jesus Christ. And I have with me two gentlemen on my left here, I'm going to introduce to you right away, that have had the same life-changing experience by a personal encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. So keep your ears open. I'm sure you'll be challenged and intrigued by what God's going to do on this program tonight for you in the name of Jesus. Steve Pelkey, you've been with us several times before. Good Hi, to have Pastor. you back. Praise God. And Brother Bill McKenzie. Praise the Lord, brother. Good to be here. Good to have you, brother. It's your first time on the set here with us, and uh, we thought we'd get a uh, three-fold cord on here. In fact, the Bible says, I believe I mentioned this to somebody earlier tonight, that a three-fold cord is not quickly broken. And Satan gets real nervous when you got three people together that have, ha that have had their lives changed by the power of God, all three of them. Praise the Lord. So, Bill, let me ask you a question. What did Jesus do for you when you encountered him in a personal fashion? The Lord, the Lord has delivered me from the, the depression, the, the destructing factors that Satan was putting in my entire life, for, which seems to last for eternity, which I know today is not eternity. It's really rather uh, relevantly a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I had been brought to this fellowship. The Lord literally had come to me in the spirit and and manifest himself through a friend who doesn't really come here very often and used him as a vehicle to bring me here to this church. When I called on Jesus, I was led here within a 24 hour period to this fellowship. First person I met here was you. The second person I met here was Steve Pelkey, Brother Pelkey. And it's been an amazing period for the last nine months now. Uh, I just have to say that I have a peace on me now, even this evening. I've never been on a set before, and it's just amazing because I couldn't even speak to a group of kids a couple years ago. But today, I can sit here on this set and tell you without a roll of sweat on my forehead that it's just the love of God in me, and I am just praising Jesus constantly, daily, for even being here now. So you would say, since you've given your life to Jesus Christ, there's absolutely been... Uh a unique change in your life too. Something's happened to you. You're not the same person you used to be either. Absolutely, 100%. It's not the same. Uh, there is a, a, a literally, uh, I am aware of the spiritual warfare that's going on in all my life. Satan does attack me. There is demons. I am aware of them. I am able to, through the blood of Jesus Christ, cast them out. Mm -hmm. I have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. who is almighty and who is all powerful and who is just the greatest which Amen. is our lord god right. and this revelation of knowledge comes to me through the blood of the lord jesus christ you know and some of, some of the greatest questions bill that i feel are answered when you come to christ and get to know him a little bit number one you find out why you're here number two the big question of What's this world all about and where am I going is settled. You know why you're here and you know where you're going. Isn't it good to have those questions settled in your life? Absolutely. There's just no doubt about it. Uh, I've been called to this ministry. I've known this for some time. I never really quite understood much of my life, seeing as how I was down and out many, many years, 20, 25 years to be mm -hmm. pretty close. Mm -hmm. And... Coming here, as, as I've actually surrendered my life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, it has become absolutely apparent to me that there's no, it's beyond reasonable doubt. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. This is where I belong. This is where I need to be. This is where I want to be. God wants me here. And now I have become obedient to the Word of God. The truth is just blowing up inside of me. Do you have a desire to share that with others? Stupid question, right? Constantly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, who's this brother next to you? This guy laughing at you for that remark, huh? 
Well, this guy here, Steve Cook, he is a, he's a wonderful, lovely man. You know, I'm, I, uh, when I first met Steve in the church, it was last March when I came over to New Life. And uh, on my way out, Steve looked at me and said hello, and it was almost like I know you. And I was like, I'm going to have to fake this, Lord. I don't know who this guy is. Hi, how you doing, Steve? <laughs> and, you know, I, I looked at him because he's got two eyes looking at me different directions. I, I wasn't aware that he, that he, he actually uh, was blind in one eye. Uh-huh. And uh, as I've got to know him, just just in a relatively short period of time, within a couple of weeks, it became evidently clear to me that Steve is a lovely man. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know how many people have told him this, but when I talked to him on the phone, almost directly after having met you mm-hmm. in that first couple of weeks, I told him so. And when I hung up the phone, I knew that it was right. It was correct. Mm-hmm. As the months proceeded along, and I began to hear some of I have to admit that it was awesome. It's awesome where Steve's been. The things that he was involved in, I can relate to directly. Mm-hmm. They parallel many things in Steve's life, mm-hmm. parallels with things that I have done. Mm-hmm. Even though there's some major differences in our lives that go back over a period of 30 years, he was mm-hmm. a visa Vietnam vet. I wasn't. He was a visa. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. But as we go back and how we got to here, is the, the parallels are just absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Steve is a lovely man. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Steve before. I don't I bet, think I would have cared to know him. I bet you couldn't have said he was a lovely man before he was a Christian, though. <laughs> I knew he couldn't from, have said I was a lovely what, man before I was a Christian. what he told me, I, he wasn't <laughs> right, right. nice at all. Right. Well, Steve, uh, since you've come into the fellowship, you've shared before, but maybe some people haven't uh, heard how you came to know the Lord or found the fellowship to where we've, we've come to know one another. Why don't you just go back uh, to the, the first experience, how you encountered uh, the Lord and encountered us here. All right. Uh, it's probably about 14 months ago now, uh, back in September of 92. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I was getting ready to use again. A lot of people know that you know, I've had uh, substance abuse and alcoholism all my life. Uh, I've been through a lot of programs, a lot of 12-step programs, uh, but I needed more in my life, and I was getting ready to go out and use again. Now, and, what kind of drugs were you using, Mike? Oh, I used everything, Pastor. I used uh, uh, heroin, cocaine. I was IV user. I used, uh, sure, shooting up all the time. I used uh, all prescription drugs, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, people that are out there using, you know, you know what I'm talking about, sulfates, dilatates, uh, mm. uh, uh, Percodons, uh, uh, Percocets, uh, mm-hmm. everything that I could get my hands on, you right, know. Right. Bad scriptions, you know, I was a thief, uh, right. all those kind of Just things. Just a ruthless drug addict. Just a ruthless drug addict, right. And uh, I really wanted to get on with life and, uh, and, and uh, or, or finish it off, mm-hmm. you know, one of the two. And I wanted some truth in my life, some real solid truth. It seems like uh, everything had boiled down to either uh, uh, I had said so many lies in my life, I couldn't tell the truth anymore. Somebody told me so many lies in my life, I didn't know the truth anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they told me about you, and I was uh, uh, cruising through some TV stations, and, and uh, you were the first pastor I seen on there that looked normal. You know, I, you know, the guy I had a... I appreciate it. Most people think I'm abnormal. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I understand yeah, okay, that now, but, but you look normal to me, you yeah. know, and, and the bike caught my eye and, 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 you know, the beard and the vest, you know, you're my kind of people. So I, I listened to you and I figured I'd come down here and uh, I'd catch your act, mm-hmm. you know, so to speak, mm-hmm. and, and I, I did and I talked to you and uh, you came over to visit me in my house, but I still wasn't certain. Mm-hmm. And when you came to my house, well, you know, I had a little plan set up for you. I had a tumble barrel shotgun waiting and uh, I was out in the garage and I had other guns and stuff placed around the house because uh, uh, you know that was part of my problems with guns too right. and uh, paranoia and stuff right. and I met you out in the garage and stuff and I figured if you're gonna lie to me mm-hmm. you know I just uh, I'd open up a couple of, I'm sorry <laughs> pastor but I'd open up a couple of barrels you know that's yeah. that's the kind of guy I was and uh, but you didn't you didn't beat me over the head with a Bible you uh, you know you made me realize that uh, Christ is a gentleman you know mm-hmm. and uh, He'll knock, but you got to open the door and let him in. So that day in my garage, you didn't ask me to uh, uh, into the sinner's prayer or anything mm-hmm. like that, and I really appreciate that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. I think if you would have, you would have, you know, maybe you would have got the double barrel. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was the following week, and I came to church, and I told you that I was a committer. And uh, when I, uh, if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. Everybody knows that. Right. You know, when you make a deal, it goes down. It's, it's the done deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I made it back to the church, and, and uh, uh, I waited out. Uh, I talked to uh, some friends about a, a friend, one friend, a dear friend of mine that uh, was a funeral director, and I checked you out in the Bible, too, so I figured if uh, you were wrong in the Bible, you were going to hang big time, you know, <laughs> if right. you believed it, right? So uh, I did all this. I checked you out and stuff, you know. 
And uh, I made an altar call, and I met Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I remember that day, Steve. Yeah, it was wonderful. In fact, that was the, the big day when uh, the life-changing power of God came into your life. And from that day on, there's been a steady eddy, I call it, pattern in your life. Where just slowly but surely, things have begun to change. You started to walk in deliverance from your life. You received some, received some miraculous deliverances. Right. You've got a totally different countenance now. Right. There's joy in your life that you never had before. Right. A peace that you never had. There's a <clears throat> humility that uh, I'm sure you never had, even though I didn't know no. you. I'm sure no. you're just as proud as the rest of us were. Right. And uh, God has caused 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, to literally... Uh, be a reality in your life like it should in everybody's life. I believe with all my heart <clears throat> that if anybody makes a commitment to Jesus Christ that there should absolutely be a change <clears throat> because if something happens on the inside it's absolutely going to show up on the outside. Steve's countenance changed, his spirit changed, the pride took a hike and a spirit humility came in and he became one of the meekest, sweetest brothers in the fellowship. And why I believe God supernaturally moves in some people's lives in a maybe more extreme uh, uh, way uh, like this and Steve's and others is because when you've been so down into the depths of sin and known the, the power of the devil, literally, and been involved in deceit and manipulations and lies and hurting people all your life, that you pretty <laughs> much know what's wrong. Right. So... It's, it's, there's a scripture in the Bible where uh, this woman came to Jesus that was a terrible sinner. And uh, there were some people that were upset that uh, she was weeping and, and, and uh, uh, wiping Jesus' feet with her, her uh, tears and her hair and, and pouring this expensive perfume on them. And this was a real sinner woman that had done a lot of stuff, adultery and a lot of stuff, had mm -hmm. a lot of devils in her. But here she was making a big scene over Jesus, pouring her heart over him, really sweet and broken and given her whole life and somebody made a comment and jesus said uh in this situation she says you tell me who would love me the more if there was a debt and say this guy owed me uh five dollars and steve owed me five thousand dollars this was the illustration jesus used and i said to both these guys i forgive you for the five dollar debt forget it steve no problem man mm -hmm. don't even worry about the five grand I'm kissing it goodbye. You don't know it. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, see, there you are. You saw him. He's like, that's cool. But Steve, it was a big thing. And Jesus asked this question. He said, who would love the more in this situation? And the guy's answer was, well, I suppose the person that had the bigger debt would feel the greater release and the, and the more thanksgiving. And Jesus said, you have rightly judged. And he said, this woman who's done this work in me, the reason she's so uh, involved with me and consumed with me and wrapped up in this thing that a lot of people are upset with, the reason she's so changed is because she had uh, a, a very tough lifestyle. She was involved in a lot of sin mm. in life. And since she's been forgiven, she's just that much more aware of how thankful she is that the grace of God has right. been abundantly shed on her in that pattern. And I'm not saying that if you're uh, not a heavy sinner, you can't have that same forgiveness, because to tell you the truth, you should realize how much of a sinner you are, because no matter how good you are, this is the heavy thing about the gospel of Jesus that a lot of people don't realize. <clears throat> There's people out here right now that aren't saved, they aren't Christians, they're watching. Now, I'm not talking about any uh, bikers or, or people that are drug addicts or tough people living a low life. I'm talking about good people nice people that are mm. tuning right now and they you know what they're saying you guys needed to get saved yeah you they're need right Jesus. they need to yeah. get saved too <laughs> yeah. brother Definitely. you know <laughs> you know we've been watching those people all of our life too you know right. and, and you know you know good people right oh, yeah, absolutely. well you know if you got that frame of mind that you're so good uh, right. i guess you don't need anybody you right. know you're absolutely. not in any problems you're not absolutely. in any sin well the bible tells us that we're all full of sin steve we were born into sin right and we need jesus christ every person every person and that's for you you good people out there and god bless you as much as the the worst sinner god bless y'all praise but the lord you good folks out here praise god you need to realize your need of jesus christ you know, the Bible says that God came that all men, ALL, all men may be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is this, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, the only way you can be forgiven, recognize who Jesus is, Son of God. What he did, he came to earth and died on the cross and shed his blood for our sins. 
so that whosoever would believe in him, that means make a commitment to him, cling to him, trust in him, make him Lord of your life, would not perish, but have everlasting life. That means that no matter who you are or what segment of society you're from, what kind of person you are, you need to be saved. You need to be what the Bible calls born again. You need to be just what it means, forgiven of your sins and make sure that you're washed free by the blood of Jesus and you're ready for heaven. You all need it. So I just wanted to put that in out there for those of you out there to think, yeah, you guys need it because you were drug addicts and, you know, in jail and this and that, and done all these wild things and hurt people and you need to be forgiven, but you need to be forgiven too. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Right. Yeah. And that puts us all on equal basis. Oh, that's, you know, that's the real neat part, you yeah, know, because yeah. everybody's on, 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 right. on a square playing field, you know. Right. Jesus, uh, yeah, you know, he don't care how rich you are. He don't right. care how much school you had. Right. He don't care how poor you are. He doesn't right. care if you're black, you're white, right. you're a biker, a suit, a lawyer, a judge. Right. He don't care. He's going to judge your heart. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, you know, the big thing I tell people is this, because <clears throat> some people get wrapped up in their denominations. Some denominations teach. I'm talking about quote-unquote Christian denominations with with uh, uh, names attached to them. There's nothing wrong with the denomination, I'm not saying, but some believe this, that unless you're a member of my denomination, you're not going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And they all of a sudden eliminate every other denomination. And let me tell you something, if that was the case, if just you could be saved because of your denomination, you know what, just let me give you this scenario. This is the way to be. Well, Lord, I'm up here because I'm a so-and-so. You know, I'm flashing my Lutheran badge or my Catholic badge or my Baptist badge or whatever it is. Uh, because I'm a Baptist or a Catholic, uh, you let me in. Well, you know what? If that was the case and we were all up there, uh, number one, you'd be there because you're a so-and-so. It wouldn't have nothing to do with Jesus right. because you're a member of some group and you've excluded everybody else. Well, number one, that's pride. And I'll tell you right now, there's no pride going into heaven. What Steve was talking about us all being put on equal basis, low lifers, up and atoms, the ones in the middle of the road, is this. It's our need of Jesus. You need Jesus, whoever you are. I need Jesus. So when we all get to heaven, why are you here? Why should I let you in? Because of what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. He died for my sins. I made him the Lord of my life. I committed my life to him. He forgave me. That's why I'm here. Absence of pride. <laughs> Everybody in heaven's going to have that same report. Nobody's going to be up there because of what they did. Well, Steve gave ten grand to the little old lady across the street and mm -hmm. helped her out. He he uh, helped thirty uh, uh, homeless. Uh, uh, people and uh, you know I did different degrees and all of a sudden everybody's boasting up in heaven right. of what they did ain't gonna happen folks no matter who you are you need Jesus and you can never say that enough isn't that true Bill absolutely God is no respecter of man it said at least once I don't remember the scripture I had and I'm not gonna pretend I do remember all the scriptures mm -hmm. um, what we need to understand and remember no matter what the denomination we come from or what kind of doctrinal teachings we have when we're going through suffering we need to know that we have faith and faith is the one scripture i do remember that i learned from one of the ministries uh which is to describe really quite well in uh chapter 11 verse 1 of hebrews which is faith is a substance of things hoped for hope being highly expecting faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen Praise God. That's what I fell on, was that faith described by Paul in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11. And when I found that faith, as I was going through my struggle, and I was literally beginning, I had three appointments with doctors, I was going to relapse, I was going to start getting prescription medications and re-drinking after 25 years and being freed from it, I was going to go back. I found that scripture of faith. Faith being that substance, I, it, it just sunk into my head. You know, it's like mm -hmm. this thick head. Right. All of a sudden, that faith yep. came to life. And then I found that scripture in Matthew 18, chapter 18, verses 18, 19, and 20, mm -hmm. saying, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Mm -hmm. And wherever two of you are agreed in prayer, I'm going to yeah. paraphrase, but wherever two of you are agreed in prayer, it shall be done in my name. Right. In his name. And, and it says, right. wherever two or three of you are gathered together. Right. And here we here are. Here we are. <laughs> There you, I am in your midst, saith the Lord Jesus Christ in 18, 19, 20 of Matthew chapter 18. I'm repeating that because I believe that is where I made my phone call and reached out. And no, it wasn't the New Life Ministries. Right. It was 3,000 miles away. 
But the Lord led me through the Spirit to this fellowship, which I couldn't have found in the yellow pages. I couldn't have found this through a prayer line asking somebody else, where should this kind of a guy go? I look like this most of my life. I've kind of been faking it, kind of been a wannabe, not really sure where I'm going with my life. And all of a sudden, here I am on this day, sitting here with these wonderful fellows about my age. And all I can say is, Lord God, thank you for delivering me, setting me free, bringing me here. You delivered me from my depression, my oppression. Lord, just thank you. Um, Praise God. I just, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. about speechless because mm -hmm. it's just awesome the deliverance that I have been receiving over this last year. Yes, I knew Jesus Christ before. Yes, I, I, I felt as though I was in a process of being saved and, and delivered over the years. Uh, I've been sober for seven years. But it wasn't until I actually began to fellowship mm. with other men and women that are 100 percenters, are completely mm. committed. Right. In yeah. a way that I used to look at police officers, they're committed, or people in prison, oh, they're committed, or people in the army, oh, they're committed by it, you know. <laughs> As I looked at all these things, I found a commitment involved here. There ain't nothing but one requirement. And that's believing in the Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord manifested himself down in the flesh and blood to death for us. Praise God. Praise and God. rose on the third day. Amen. Praise God. And believing that with all my heart. In faith, right. until it began to sink in. And that's and what changed your life, brother. And that's what's changed. That's, that's, that's and, you know, and you know, I believe people are being encouraged right now. And you know, the thing is, a lot of people think, well, i got to give up this, give up that. <clears throat> let me tell you something. Let me just ask you this. Just answer this very simple. Are you having fun that you're a Christian? The, the bottom line on that is just the other morning, just two days ago, I was buzzing around from the bathroom to the bedroom and getting dressed. And I've been just so busy this last year. And as I, as I was turned around the stairs, the stairs that I once fell down, and split my head wide open, fractured my eye socket, and that was eight years ago. I was turning around the stairs, and I came down, and I said, well, Lord, what should I do now? And the Lord God said, praise God, go out and have some fun. <laughs> I was on my way to church, and you know, I just went with it. Praise God. That's cool. Yeah. It. And you know what? You got a 56 <laughs> pan head. Is you ride. Did God tell you to get rid of your Harley Davidson? No, the devil tried to get Tommy get rid of my Harley Davidson seven years ago when I first stopped drinking. I ran into somebody and somebody said to me, they said, we heard you got saved. And they didn't know I wasn't saved at that particular time. And they said, do you want to sell your bike? And I said, go away. I'm not selling nothing. Yeah. And I continued to uh, enjoy a sober life, but there was still a void. Mm -hmm. uh, and evidently that void caught up with me over the last couple of years. Right. Uh, I began watching television ministry full time. I turned off all the other stations. Mm -hmm. um, and and now the the bike, well, I just got done rebuilding that engine. I mean, we're ready to roll now. Ready to roll, bro. We're ready to roll. This spring yep. is going to be good. It's 1995 gonna be good. is going to be And we want to encourage any who want to ride with us. We got some things in the flyer I can't mention right now, but uh, there's some things coming up and uh, a lot of people uh, uh, fellowshipping out here and uh, bringing their bikes out. If you got a Harley Davis and you want to ride with us, come on out. Right, Praise Steve? The, praise the Lord. And, and, and we got some things we'll be sharing in the next few months about uh, things that are developing in that area that are just exciting. And we want to say something out there if you ride and you're a member of a local club. I want to say it's from my heart. I love you, brothers. And these brothers that have met some of you brothers, they love you too. And I know a lot of other people in this city that love you guys a lot. And you know, it's sad, but a lot of people judge people by their looks. Well, we're here to break down those lies of the devil and let you know that you are loved by God just the way you look right now. You know, God doesn't want you to change your appearance, necessarily cut your hair, change your clothes. God is in the heart changing business. When you give your life to Jesus, he doesn't tell you to put a three-piece suit on. He may tell some people that, but I've been around 20 years. I've had three-piece suits, and I've come out of them. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, God said this, be all things to all men. And uh, I don't believe God has some cookie-cutter mold that when you get stamped, now you got to look like this, and you got to talk like this, and you got to be like this. I have visited people in the hospital, guys, in different places, and they said, well, there is, this isn't visiting hours. And I'll say, well, I'm a pastor. And I'll look up at me and they'll go, oh, you're a pastor? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them, well, what's a pastor supposed to look like? And I say, yeah, I guess you're right. But, you know, we've got this stereotype image of what a pastor or a Christian is supposed to look like. And to tell you the truth, I believe that has caused many people to not even want to hear the true gospel of Jesus. Jesus fellowshiped 
with the lowest of people and went in and fellowship with them and a lot of religious people got upset. And I'll tell you, the days of uh, certain dogmas that have been erected in the church are coming down and I believe God is ministering to every person on their level wherever it's at. If you drive a BMW and you got $3 million in the bank, more power to you, praise God, that's cool. God will send you somebody in a, a Porsche with $10 million in the bank to minister to you. That's cool. And he'll be a Christian. I'm telling you, God is pulling out the plug to reach out to everybody at every level of society. Amen. And I'll tell you the truth. I'm excited to be a part. I Here's know Steve's Lord. excited yep. to be a part. Bill's excited to be a part. I know people on the scene here, behind the scenes in this room right now that you don't see. They're excited to be a part. And God wants you to be a part. And you can be a part if you just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God said, I will raise you up. What are conditions for salvation? Number one, you must believe Jesus is the Son of God. You must be willing, number two, to repent from your sinful lifestyle. He means to just say, God, I'm willing to change directions of my life and give my life to you. Whatever you want. We're talking about 100% commitment. A lot of you know what I'm talking about, the 100% commitment. Some of you run from that. Some of you know what it's all about. That's what Jesus is all about. And the thing is, when you give up your life for Jesus, he gives you his life. Then you'll have the peace, the humility, the joy, the strength, the stability, the blessing instead of the curse. Ever felt like you've been cursed? I used to tell people my whole life, man, I feel like I'm living under a curse. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. A lot of you don't know Jesus. Look it up. Deuteronomy chapter 28, about verse 1 to 15. It talks about how to be cursed. Verse 16 on to about 72 talks how to be blessed. I was living under those first 15 verses. Check it out. If you want Jesus and come out from under that curse, be forgiven. God isn't saying leave uh, the people necessarily you're associated with. He's saying give your life to him and let him come in and make you a new person. I'll tell you what, your desires will change, your motivation will change. You'll know why you're here and where you're going. Number one, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Number two, do you want to give your life to him? If you do, pray this after me right now say lord jesus christ that's it lord jesus christ i give you my heart i lay my life before you right now and i want you to give me your life and say this forgive me for my sins and make me into the kind of person you want me to be that's it and you know some of you are giving away a life that wasn't worth two cents to begin with and right now, I believe you're experiencing his life, his peace, his forgiveness, and his mercy. And the Bible says, if you repented right now your sins, that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you from all sin. So, if you've made a commitment to Christ, follow through with it. Give us a call. We'll help hook you up. You don't have to come to our church. If you want to, fine. We'll fellowship with you, help you. We'll get you where you need to go and help you in any way we can. But call that number, 296-7100. Let us know what's happened. Follow through. For those of you that have made a commitment, continue to tune in. We want to encourage you because God wants to be your friend. And again, he's going to do everything he can in these last days to minister to you, to show you how much he cares for you. Well, Brother Steve, God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Glad to be, have you here again. Again, you don't look as good as my wife. but uh, Neither do you. Oh, uh, <laughs> I know that, brother. God bless you, Bill. Thanks again, brother. <laughs> you guys out there, keep having a good time in Jesus. Remember, it's a good thing to laugh if you're a Christian. So be blessed in Jesus. Yeah.